Now, basically, this figure is pretty much the, like the entire outline of like you know different types of you know like spontaneous abortions that can occur, as well as like a differential uh, diagnosis. And for each of these, I'm also going to be talking about the management of uh, some of these problems. So basically, when a woman comes in with vaginal bleeding, obviously you want to take a thorough history and a physical examination, as well as getting a pregnancy test. Now, upon physical examination, if you can see that the cervix is open and the products of conceptions are actually um, examined, then this would be actually be deemed as a complete abortion or an incomplete abortion. Um, and basically, management will basically be to like either leave it alone or help expel the contents of the remnants of the fetus. Um, and again, if you also suspect that, you know, or if you can visually see that there are cervical or vaginal sources of bleeding, then you also want to manage that appropriately. And in the case that you know the pregnancy test is negative, again, there are a variety of gynecologic causes of like you know vaginal bleeding that can occur of all women. And but let's say you know for for the purposes of this talk, we're going to be talking about you know like a woman comes in with a positive pregnancy test as well as vaginal bleeding, and this is basically where ultrasound examination is very important to kind of rule out the different types of spontaneous abortions. Obviously, if everything is normal within like the fetus and the fetal sac and the cardiac activity, then this will be kind of deemed as normal physiologic vaginal bleeding. And basically, you want to reassure the patient that this is a normal process that can occur in about 20 to 40% of pregnant women in the first trimester. Things like ectopic pregnancy, ultrasound findings, basically you're going to see that you know, within the uterus, there's nothing there, but maybe like in the adnexal structures or in the ovaries, there might be a pregnancy that occurs there. And this is actually a medical emergency which requires surgical intervention. Uh, with threatened abortion, basically this is defined as just kind of like um, vaginal bleeding that occurs before the gestational age of 20 weeks and the woman will come in. And again, this is kind of like, you know, in variation of like normal physiologic vaginal bleeding, but you can't really tell. And basically the management is to just kind of wait and see and see if like the uh, vaginal or like the um, pregnancy takes. And on the far right, basically I have <clears throat> listed incomplete, inevitable, and missed abortion into kind of one category, just solely due to the fact that the management of these different types of abortions is pretty much the same. With incomplete abortion, basically you have fetal remnants that have passed, but not completely. And you have cervical dilation as well as vaginal bleeding, as well as pelvic pain. Inevitable abortion is basically when you have, you know, things like vaginal bleeding as well as pelvic pain. Um, and basically, you know, within like a ultrasound, uh, ultrasound you're going to see that, you know, like a, there is pretty much the demise of the fetus. And with the missed abortion, it is basically defined as a person that comes in with vaginal bleeding. Um, and also like, uh, upon ultrasound, like uh, examination, again, you're, you're, you're going to see like an intact fetus that's pretty much dead. And so basically management consists of basically three different types of management. Number one is surgical, number two is medical, and number three is expectant. Obviously with surgical intervention, there's kind of, there's going to be inherent risks, you know, just kind of like, you know, like um, infections, uh, um, things of that nature. Um, and usually it involves, you know, dilatation and curatage as well as dilatation and evacuation. And these are indicated for like women that, you know, obviously might have a potential risk of like complications of having a fetus within them that's not viable. And some of the complications might be like things like DIC and infections and uh, things like that. With, you know, like a medical management, you basically, the, the standard drug of choice is um, misoprostol, which is like a prost prostaglandin E1 analog, which helps open the uh, cervix, dilate the cervix, as well as expel some of the contents um, out of the uh, uterus. And you can also kind of like uh, use um, an additional drug called mifoprestone, which is a progesterone um, antagonist um, as well. And as far as, you know, like expectant management, you know, this is pretty much like, um, I guess, like the whole philosophy of, you know, let, let time heal all, or basically just kind of wait and see. And obviously, you know, this is more due to the fact that, you know, there are certain psychosocial aspects of like, you know, like having like a woman come in and finding out that she's spontaneously aborted. Obviously, this is very traumatic and they don't want to go through like the process of, you know, things like expelling the contents of what was once supposed to be their baby out. And so, but obviously there are kind of like, you know, like inherent risks with that because you do worry about things like infection and hemorrhage, things of that nature. So that's kind of like, you know, like more in tune to like, you know, like the relationship between the doctor and the patient and, you know, just trying to like, you know, gather all the resources and the information and managing appropriately. And so now I'm going to uh, give Jamie like a, the post miscarriage care and counseling. Okay. So I'm going to, um, Daniel has uh, discussed the specific managements for each type of spontaneous abortion, but um, with any type of spontaneous abortion, um, it's important to find out a woman's uh, RH status. And if you find out that she is RH negative and she is unsensitized, then she should receive an RHD immunoglobin following surgical evacuation. 
Um, also, what ha this is just your standard dose of an IM injection, intramuscular, of 300 micrograms. Um, in addition, all uh, females who undergo a spontaneous abortion should receive at least two weeks of pelvic rest. Um, and then, what's an, which uh, someone already else kind of highlighted on, um, is grief counseling. This is another important aspect when dealing with spontaneous abortions, as many uh, women and uh, couples were um, ultimately planning the birth of their child.